the genealogy proof of God. Now, you'd find that there's numerology, a lot of numbers in the Bible, and all those numbers have meaning. And in this, we're going to look at sevens in the Bible. Now, Chuck Missler is one of the people that has taught on this before, and there are various others, but I'll tell you in the end exactly who discovered this specific one that is so exciting. The sevens occur in over 600 passages in the Bible. Many are implicit, some are very overt, and some are very structural, hidden under the text. To illustrate this, try and make a fictitious genealogy with a few rules. The rules must be followed in the genealogy that you're going to make. The number of words you use must be divisible by seven exactly. The number of letters you use must be divisible by seven exactly. The number of vowels must be divisible by seven exactly. The number of consonants must be divisible by seven exactly. The number of words that begin with a vowel must be divisible by seven exactly. The number of words that begin with a consonant must be divisible by seven exactly. The number of words that occur more than once must be divisible by seven. The number of words that occur in more than one form must be divisible by seven. The number of words that occur in only one form must be divisible by seven. The number of nouns shall be divisible by seven. Only seven words shall not be nouns. The number of names shall be divisible by seven. Only seven other kinds of nouns are permitted. The number of male names shall be divisible by seven. The number of generations shall be divisible by seven. This is the description of the genealogy of Jesus Christ as found in the first 11 verses of the book of Matthew. And all of this has to be in the Greek language, which is probably the most precise rigid language ever written, and each letter has its own Greek alphanumeric number too, just like Hebrew. With just nine rules, for this genealogy, there's only one chance in over 40 million of creating this genealogy by random chance. How long would it take, do you think? Assuming you work eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year, and take two weeks off for the holidays, obviously. That would be 2,000 hours per year, or 120,000 minutes per year. The number of attempts needed, if randomized, would be 7 to the ninth power, or 79. That would be over 40 million attempts. If it takes an average of 10 minutes to try one draft, that would be 403 million minutes. The project would take you 3,000 years of work. So anyone that says it's possible for this to happen by statistical randomness is naive. These discoveries were made by Dr. Ivan Panin, PhD in mathematics. He became a Christian in 1882 discovered the heptatic structure of the text, and spent the rest of his life generating 43,000 pages of discoveries. He went on to be with the Lord in 1943. How amazing is that? How much proof is that for how divinely inspired the Word of God is? And that's just looking at the genealogy in Matthew. The second genealogy surprise. Matthew as a Levite focused on the Messiahship of Jesus 
and traces the legal line from Abraham through David, then Solomon, and the royal line to Joseph, the legal father of Jesus. Matthew 1, verse 1 to 17. Luke, as a physician, focuses on the humanity of Jesus and traces the bloodline from Adam. And once Luke gets to Abraham, the genealogy is identical to Matthew's up to the house of David. Luke then goes through Nathan to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Luke 3 verse 23 to 39. Taking a look at the last 10 people mentioned at the end of Luke 3, we get a message coded into their names. You might have seen this before in Genesis. But here it is in Luke. The son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mehalalel, the son of Canaan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Now we decode the meanings of their names. It provides a summary of the Christian gospel. Man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down teaching that his death shall bring the despairing comfort or rest. How amazing and beautiful is the word of God. Shalom.